get started. And um, thank you everyone for joining. My name's Abby McNulty. I'm the executive director of the Park City Education Foundation. I wanna give a special thanks to um, everyone on today's call, including our Scholar Circle members who make annual leadership gifts to the Park City Education Foundation to support our work. Our goal today is to help you make connections with the Park City Education Foundation, with your principal, Mr. Caleb Fine, with our superintendent, uh, Dr. Jill Gilday, and to Anna Stampley, um, a key member of the Park City School District team. Um, it's an opportunity to learn a little bit about PCEF and um, also just learn what's happening inside uh, Treasure Mountain Junior High School. Um, Park City Education's foundation, our mission is to fund initiatives that inspire all students to reach their academic and lifelong potential. We've been doing this work for over 34 years and we exist because Utah is the lowest funded education system in the country and locally 96% of the tax dollars collected to support education leave our community to fund other districts in the state. So every year we raise money to fund key programs uh, listed here. And um, these programs impact every one of the 5,000 students in our district. And um, you can find more detail about the programs we support on our website, pcef4kids.org, including information about the programs we specifically support at each school. And uh, thanks, Jen Billo just posted our um, web address in the chat. 100% um, of your gifts stay in Park City when you make a donation to the Park City Education Foundation and you all help create um, enriching, robust, uh, wonderful school experiences for every student. So thank you very much. Um, if this year has taught us anything, it's how important schools and educators are in our community. And we're so grateful to be able to continue this work um, and have expanded to include an educator wellness initiative as well as an economic relief fund for students, families, and teachers. Um, now more than ever, our Scholar Circle members make this work uh, possible, help us fund these initiatives. And um, an event like this is an opportunity for us to say thank you and, um, and help you connect to other education champions in our community. Um, I wanna give a special introduction to Dr. Jill Gilday, superintendent who's joining us today. And now I'll turn it to Anna Stampfley, um, the Parent Education and Community Engagement Coordinator for Park City School District. Thank you, Abby, for that introduction. Thank you, everyone, for being here today to meet uh, Principal Fine and to meet me in my new position. Um, I moved to Park City three and a half years ago. I just realized this week and when my husband and I left New York with our two dogs and four children, um, I needed to enroll them in a new school district at four different levels uh, of the school district in a community that actually was structured differently from the one I came from in New York. Uh, my son was going into his junior year at high school, in high school, at the Park City High School. And I had three daughters. I have three daughters at the time. One was entering ninth grade at Treasure Mountain Junior High School, which was different from where I came from in New York. And um, a seventh grader at Ecker and a fifth grader at Parley's Park Elementary School. And what we learned as a community uh, and what Dr. Gilday and the school board recognized was that the community needed someone to answer our questions, to guide us through processes and procedures, and to help us as a community navigate the school district on behalf of our children. And that's why my position was created, and I feel very honored and uh, to hold the position and to be able to answer your questions today and future questions. Uh, at the end of the meeting today, the Park City and Foundation will have my a contact information posted for you to access and to write down again if you need any questions answered 
Um, I'd like to thank Parks of the Ed Foundation for hosting this meeting because when I first moved here, schools were open and available. And with this pandemic, national pandemic, worldwide pandemic, um, we haven't been able to have our buildings open. So this is a nice opportunity to meet me as the Parent Education and Community Engagement Coordinator and to speak with Principal Fine. Um, just a reminder, as you submit questions, which we hope you will, to the chat box, please be guided by the thought that we want everyone to benefit from the answers to the questions. So if you have specific questions you wanna ask about your child, um, please save those for another time and email either me or Mr. Fine. So without further ado, Principal Fine. Thanks, Anna. Uh, thanks everyone for being here. I miss uh, not having our schools quite as open in the COVID environment and, and we're not able to have you come in as often. We miss that. We look forward to that happening again, hopefully sooner than later. We're all uh, eagerly optimistic with the vaccinations and uh, improved therapeutics that that can be sooner than later. So thanks for your patience this year as we mitigate COVID. I'm Caleb Fine. I've been working in the school district for 12 years. Uh, this is my fifth year as an administrator. Administrator. I was a business teacher uh, for seven years at Park City High School and then an assistant principal at Park City High School for three years. So my second year at Treasure and uh, I love it. I'm grateful for the opportunity each day to work with your kids. I think as you as you move through education and I I've been fortunate enough to have kids of my own. You you grasp that immeasurable worth, that infinite value that each student has. So I'm I'm humbled every day that you entrust my staff to love and care for your child and empower them to reach their full potential uh, uh, in their future. So thank you for the opportunity you give us each day. It is uh, it is a privilege and an honor, and uh, we really try to do our best every day. And we're grateful that you trust us to do that. So uh, I fell in love with education on accident. I started in business and um, through uh, some poor test performances, which was a great learning experience for me. I spent some time in South Africa working with AIDS orphans and uh, fell in love with students and came back here. Uh, and at the time they needed a basketball coach. I played basketball in college as well as being a Park City High School graduate and uh, kind of wanted to explore teaching and business is my background. I was able to sell a small company here in Park City. And next thing you know, I'm teaching classes, falling in love with education and always had that itch for leadership. Um, and what a great combination to be in a leadership role uh, in education, working in uh, my favorite district in the world. So that's a bit about me. Um, I did want to touch on our COVID realities. As, as I'm sure most of you are aware, we are remote here and we hope that that's been a uh, endurable and even positive experience for your students with the new schedule that uh, Dr. Hunt and her team made uh, for our students to follow along with remote learning. If you had any issues with that, we welcome your feedback. Please send me an email. Um, but uh, that ends on the 25th. Your students do not need to test prior to returning, but you should have received even another text message today asking to please fill out that consent form. We'll begin our two week testing rotation on the 25th. And your students come back they'll get tested once in the next two weeks um, so we're looking forward to having them back on the 25th uh, we're going to continue to wear masks we're fortunate that we've been able to mitigate uh, our cases even at park city high school and treasure mountain although we went remote for a short period of time i can say if you look at the state data across schools we've been uh, as safe as possible and uh, it's been i would call it very successful i feel safe here there were a lot of unknowns going into the year we'll continue with our one-way hallways hand sanitization and i'm uh, optimistic with the test day program, we're not going back to remote. And, uh, and I do believe that for most students, the best learning happens in person. So I'm excited about that reality. Um, anyhow, a little bit about Treasure. Uh, our mission is to empower students to reach their full potential in a diverse and dynamic world. The, the potential, you see that in the district's mission statement, you see it in the Ed Foundation's mission statement, and you see it in each school's mission statement. We really want our students to reach their potential. Um, and at, at this year, our theme was relationships first. So what you're seeing right now is each department at the beginning of the year, in, a, in an unknown year, we knew that we could be real with relationships. So they came up with their themes for relationships and that's what you're seeing in every classroom you go into you're going to see the department's goals for relationships first and what that looks like in each department so these posters are are throughout our school. Um, we also like to say at Treasure Mountain Junior High that we're Mustangs and we're minors. Um, and, and you see that in, in our logo now. We are excited that our students are on the Kearns campus. And as much as I love Treasure, I know that students 
uh, they, you know, you know, the beauty of a one district uh, high school is everyone is competing and growing up as a minor. That's what they want to be. So as they come into eighth grade, we like to celebrate the fact that not only are we Mustangs, but we're minors. And we like to start that experience here on the Kearns campus with exposures to Park City High School and really the incredible campus uh, that we have here. And it's exciting to be a part of it. So we are minors, but and we are Mustangs. Um, some of my favorite things about Treasure Mountain Junior High really is the exposure students have to the Kearns campus. Um, I also believe we have world-class teachers. I've been fortunate enough to work in a few different schools now, and I, I put our second to none. I'm proud of everything that happens in this district, but I'm incredibly proud of the teachers at Treasure Mountain. And I think the theme you'll hear, if you hear anything about Treasure uh, and the quality education that's provided here is that we do have great teachers. So um, I'm proud of what happens. Um, we have incredible support from our district administration. Dr. Gilday can attest to the fact that there are regular test text message and phone calls between her and I, Dr. Hunt and I, and it's it's a beauty uh, of a smaller district. We're, we're a medium-sized district. We're not as small as sometimes we, we think we are, but um, it allows us to be very personal and carry that relationships first theme in, in every element, which hopefully pours back into the students. So um, we're very supported. Um, we have mastery-based standard-based learning here at Treasure. Uh, and, and our goal is for our students to leave here uh, as far progressed in the standards as possible. That means that um, they don't have learning gaps going into the high school where they can continue to explore their passion areas. Uh, and then the last, one of my last favorite things, uh, you can't go into any school within our, within our district and not notice what the Ed Foundation does. Um, specifically at Treasure, I'll have you go, Mitch, to the next slide for me. Specifically at Treasure, one of my favorite things is our maker space and library renovation. This is a picture of our 3D printers. You're gonna see incredible technology at Ecker Hill, at Treasure Mountain and the high school. This is an example of that technology. And if you continue to move through the slides for me, Mitch, um, you'll see last year, this was my favorite uh, physical project last year. I'm a huge believer in space and although we haven't been able to use the space as collaboratively as we'd like this year due to COVID. This was a true collaboration effort to redo our library from carpet to bookshelves to whiteboard tables um, to new TVs for presentation. And the district poured in money, the Ed Foundation poured in almost $50,000, all things uh, said and done, as well as the PTO. So it took funding from three different places to create uh, an incredibly flexible learning space. So our library, all of, uh, we're the only library in the district where all of our bookshelves are on wheels. Um, so we can create learning cubbies. We can divide off space with the bookshelves. You can even go to the next slide and see that. We have soft seating. We have tables on wheels, chairs on wheels. All the tables are whiteboard tables. Students can present off of those tables. So it's really become a, uh, a, a central theme to our, uh, our learning environment. And even in COVID, it's allowed us to space out even more. It's not our first priority to create a bunch of space. And as Mitch is moving into these pictures, you're moving into another one of our favorite programs. Yes, in the space, but our MASA, Mustang After School Program, is funded by the Ed Foundation. And it's a Again, a collective effort between our school community council, which funds the academic portion of our um, after school program. And then the Ed Foundation allows us to also provide passion and fun areas that the land trust program does not allow us to fund. So again, it's that collaborative effort where the Ed Foundation is meeting our need. But what we know, and this is a picture of open gym, they're playing dodgeball. What we know about students is that they have a positive connection to school they are going to do better in school. So, uh, and we're also coming to a time where school might not be as fun for them anymore. Uh, you know, elementary, that joy of learning, we do see it go away. And at sometimes our system has hurt, has hurt students, not specifically at Park City School District, but the system of education. and pulling these passion areas back in really allows students to engage. So um, no better than dodgeball. You might even find me there from time to time uh, because it's a lot of fun. So we have open gym, we have Dungeons and Dragons, uh, which is awesome because, and in none of these pictures, note none of our after school programs here are using technology. I'm a huge fan of technology. I believe we need to expose students to technology, but I love the social relationships being built, just playing uh, and having a positive experience uh, in our school, coming back the next day with a smile on their face, ready to learn. So the, the after school program is a gift, Dungeons and Dragons, um, which uh, RC club, here's kids racing cars, 
open gym. We have art club, I think, in the next picture. We also have academic supports for math, English, uh, generalized homework support. We're able to offer incentives for students to be there. So a lot of great things happen in our after school program. Then we are also supported. This is a uh, image of some of the classroom grants. And in this image, our students in computer science are working on uh, scrum project management. It is probably my favorite learning activity students do here. All ninth graders do it. And they use Legos. The Ed Foundation funded these Legos and students, even though it's computer science and for this learning project, there's almost no technology. The students are working on sprints and then they have group meetings to discuss what they need to do, where they're ahead, where they're behind, how they can support each other. So you see the students working on communication project management. Um, they're working under a stressful environment because even, even though Legos are a ton of fun, when you say you have eight minutes to build something, eight minutes is a day in our, in our um, long project management. Uh, these students are stressed. They're having fun. They're asking each other how they can help each other. Uh, so the communication you hear, the language you hear being used, and the project management skills they're gaining in this two-day uh, scrum management Lego experiment is a blast. Wouldn't happen without the Ed Foundation. And I'll tell you what, it is incredible the engagement you have with students when you give them a couple Lego building blocks. I'm a big fan of it. And uh, again, you can find me building a tree from time to time as these students create their own their own city. So um, we have fun here as educators too. That's important. Some of the other things that uh, the Ed Foundation is, uh, funds for us is our Latinos in Action. So our Latinos in Action students are able to have a sweatshirt and a jacket they're proud of. They're able to go to leadership conferences. Latinos in Action is open for any student who is bilingual. Um, and it's a great opportunity, obviously, for our Latino students to really have a positive impact in our community. They tutor at the elementary schools. They're uh, breaking negative stereotypes that are unfortunate that exist but do because they're 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 basically blowing through ceilings that exist right now and we're proud of what happens that's funded by the ed foundation we have art grants um and, and many more so the ed foundation is our ultimate partner um i can call i have i have my sources uh you know we'll call the ed foundation we'll call dr gilday or dr hunt and uh it's incredible the collective effort what can happen it, it's never one group that can get us over the hump everyone's needed so uh but it, it, it ends up for a fun positive learning experience so those are the highlights to what treasure is. And um, that's really all I wanted to say. I can't wait uh, for those of you who are eighth grade parents to, to come in next year. Hopefully that's the case and we can show you a little bit more of this in person. And for those going to high school, I love the high school. I'm so excited for your kids to be there. I think they're gonna have a world-class experience there. And uh, it's it's a beautiful building. So we're, we're excited for your kids to progress. We're hoping we're preparing them for their future to reach that full academic and social potential. But again, thanks for entrusting us. Um, and I'm just, I'm grateful for the opportunity I have every day in this district to work with your children. Thank you, Principal Fine, so much for that description of the amazing building and school that is Treasure Mountain. Uh, part of this experience today was to allow you all to ask questions of myself and Mr. Fine. So if you want that opportunity, I'll be looking at the chat and hopefully someone will ask a question or someone on our panel has a question maybe they want to bring up to maybe start the flow of questions. Oh. Jen Billow, uh, how do you decide what the priority is with limited funding? That's, that's a great question. So we have a school improvement plan that's focused on data. Um, so we're really looking to obviously, we're, we're always looking to, to reduce our achievement gap. And um, that's the reality that we have students that are at a disadvantage academically. That can be because of a language barrier, that could be because of socioeconomic realities. And it is a known reality that those students are not performing as well as maybe someone without that, that barrier. So we are trying to minimize that gap. And, and one thing I challenge my teachers to do, I say, if the curve goes this way and the gap doesn't minimize as much, I'm okay if everyone's on the upward trajectory. But what we can't have is where the gap is growing. So that's 
always going to be a priority for us is to focus on how do we uh, close our achievement gap. Um, and then, then some of our other priorities are our student based uh, desires if students bring forth a, a want or a need, especially with like our Mustang after school program, we're always looking to uh, improve those clubs. So um, it's a combination of, of database decision out of our school improvement plan and what aligns to our school and district mission, as well as our, uh, our student feedback, which is fun in eighth and ninth grade, you can really start getting into student feedback, maybe a little bit more than you can in elementary, their feedback's valuable, but you know, they're there, I have a four year old, they're a little irrational too at times. So um, no questions, but comments, which I think are really pertinent as well. Uh, from Kristen Schultz, Mustang After School. Um, the Mustang After School program is a great program. Our eighth grader does both D&D &D and string band and loves them both. And she also loves her teachers. Thanks for all you've done for our kids. Um, Joan Meixner, no question, but love the after school programs that the school district and, P and PCEF funds. I think it's a great program from Ecker to Treasure Mountain Junior High. My daughter currently loves the after school art. Thank you for the funding. Ben Rifkin, if you had unlimited resources, what is the number one thing you would change about Treasure Mountain Junior High, the Treasure Mountain Junior High experience or the Treasure Mountain Junior High experience? Um, you know, if we had unlimited resources, Ben, I, I'm a believer in how we use space and, um, and, and I believe that you want in, in an adaptive fluid environment where we know we're preparing students for jobs that don't exist. I want my space to be adaptive, you know. So if you had unlimited resources, we'd have a different building, um, no doubt about it. And I know that that is in the master plan. I know that's been identified by people other than me. Um, if I had unlimited resources next year and it was unrelated to um, to the, the building and the physical realities of it, Wow, that is that's a heavy question because you're always working with limited resources uh, in education, but unlimited resources for next year. Um, I would probably reduce class sizes even more. Um, although we have the best in the state, I, I've, I've never seen poor class sizes, um, and I probably do more co-teaching, putting two educators in one room, so we could ensure that 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 differentiated learning experience existed. It's things we're actually talking about, um, but they come at a cost. So you know, but it, it would it would start with physical building for me. I I would this building is ready for a um, for probably just to transition. Um, and I do believe ninth graders should be at the high school. Um, and I think uh, and I'm excited for when that time comes, but in the interim, I think great things are happening. Caleb, I have a question. Can you tell us what a silver lining has been this year? Oh, that's awesome. I, I do think Abby, um, the, the relationships first and that emphasis ha has been notable. Um, I think students would tell you that the, the culture in this building is a positive, it's a positive place to be. So I think the biggest silver lining is to see how students and teachers have taken a negative situation and focused on what's right rather than what's wrong. Um, what a life lesson that uh, this will be. I try to tell my teachers, even the students, someday you're gonna get interviewed about life in a pandemic, life in political controversy, life in this incredibly challenging racial tension uh, that exists. And um, we can have stories about how we help be a part of the solution or how we are part of the problem. And I think our school is a part of the solution. And I think kids are, are being empowered to be critical thinkers. Uh, and I think our teachers are positive. I, I mean, to be positive this year, we've had our hits as, a, uh, as an institution with some, some tragic loss. And yet, even through COVID, even through the political challenges, um, and even through loss, um, our teachers come with a smile on their face. It's been, a, it's been a positive year. I will remember it fondly and I'm looking forward to, to being done. Thank really? you. Yes, great questions and great answers. I do have to uh, chime in on what Ben said. There are great answers and great people in this institution. Um, any other questions? We're coming up on the last Four minutes. Joan also said, thanks, Caleb. Your positive attitude is infectious. Thank you. It is. Um, any other questions? Again, if you think of something afterwards, it doesn't have to be in this chat, you can always email me. Um, I don't know, Mitch, if you want to put up my information now, you know how to contact 
Caleb Fine at Treasure Mountain. Uh, this is how you contact me. If you have any questions about anything, um, you can call me or email me and I will either answer them or direct them to the person who can answer them for you. Um, and I wanted to give a special thanks um, for you all uh, joining us today. It's nice to see you. Um, Caleb, special thanks to you, especially for um, your positivity, your leadership um, during this very challenging year. It really is infectious. Um, I thought that's probably not the word for today, um, but it, it's, it's just so wonderful and reassuring to know our kids have such strong committed um, leaders uh, and um, also, thank you for sharing the photos from inside your school building. As a parent of two kids in the school district, I miss seeing children. I miss seeing their classrooms. I miss seeing the inside of a school building. And it really feels good to see kids smiling with their eyes under their masks and going about business as usual. So thank you for that. Um, just a reminder, uh, you all, your Scholar Circle donations or leadership annual gifts, um, your gifts support this work um, in helping us um, support the amazing leadership um, at Treasure Mountain and at Park City School District. So we're grateful to you and um, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks everyone. Please don't hesitate to reach out directly with any questions, comments, concerns. Anna's amazing <laughs> as well, so great resource for you. Yes, thank you all. Thank you, PCEF and scholar members, and thank you, Dr. Gilday.